Hello and welcome to another video tutorial for TazMcCarthy.com This one on Scratch, this time we're going to look at making things scroll so it looks like it moves. Now here's a fairly simple game I've made, it's got lots of little fancy bits which means there's a lot of different scripts here but you could make something like this over several weeks at school, you only need to look at adding a couple of these scripts working out one per lesson and over each lesson you'll end up with something really nice. The way this game works is that when the user presses spacebar, it sets up a race, and then they press the left and right keys back and forth as fast as possible to run. If they press the same one twice in a row, they trip over. But basically, they get to the end and they set a time. Just like this. Now you'll notice that it looks like the cat is running across the screen. There's a very simple way that this is done. Very simple indeed. The cat actually says on the same spot, if I hide my lion and then begin to run again, that's exactly what happens in the game. The only thing that's changed is that these lines are no longer moving. So that's probably the easiest way to make a game with something that's scrolling. I'll show you how to do that now. So we'll open up a new one. Okay, we'll make it look like our cat is going up the screen this time. To make this work, you need to have another object which is going to scroll down past it. So for now, we'll just add a blob. That'll work fine. This is all going to work on the X and Y coordinates that Scratch is built on. So what I will do, just to make that clearer, is to import the grid background. Okay, basic scrolling. First thing I want to happen is when the game starts, I need this sprite here to be facing downwards. So when the game starts, point in the direction down. And then I'm going to put on a big forever loop. What I want it to do is to keep on moving 10 steps, but if it reaches the edge, to go back to the beginning. So I'll put my if underneath there, and now we'll program the other bits. Where I want it to start from, I'm going to put it where I want it to start from, and then up here in the information, I'm going to read the X and the Y, and that's what I'm going to drag into here. So minus 127, eighty. I'll also put one of those at the top so it always starts up there. Now what's going to happen when we start the game is it's going to fall down but then it's going to get stuck. To give it the impression that it scrolls, when it reaches the bottom we need it to go back up to the top. If we tell it if it's touching the edge to go back to up to the top, as soon as it moves up the top, it'll get stuck there because it'll still think it's touching the top and just keep on trying to go back to this top area. So instead we're going to use our Y value. We're going to tell it if we'll drag out an equals and we'll look where it is stuck now. So the Y is minus 193. So we'll tell it if the y equals minus 123 when it's down the bottom to then go up the top. So we'll test this. Okay, sometimes it can be a little bit glitchy and the way to get around that is instead of using an equals to use a greater than or less than so I might set mine to be 
anything smaller, anything less than minus 120. So that way I know it will definitely trigger. So if the Y position of the ball reaches anything below that, that's when it's going to jump back up to the top. It's a little bit jerky at the moment. I think I want it to get a little bit lower. So I'll set that to something like minus 170. That's better. If we want to speed that up, we just change the amount of steps. If we want to slow it down, we reduce the amount of steps. Now you might have a game where you have a spaceship that you're programmed to follow the mouse or to dodge from side to side, or you have a car and you're dodging things on the road. That's a little bit easy if this is always in the same spot. What we're going to do now, we always want it to go to the same Y value up the top, but we're going to get it to vary the X. So we're going to add one layer of complexity. Under green, our operators, we're going to use our random one, and we're going to give it a range. If we move the mouse over, we'll see down here that maybe the widest we want it to go is about minus 200. So we'll put in minus 200. And the first we want it to go on this side is 200, positive 200. So now we've told it when the game starts, and we'll copy one of those to go here, to pick a random spot for its X between over here and over here, and then go down to the bottom. When it reaches the bottom, pick another random spot. So we'll test that out. So when it reaches the bottom, it picks a different spot each time. Something else you might like to do to make it a little bit harder is to control click or right click on here and click duplicate. Now we have two of these. I'll quickly edit one of them and paint bucket it a different color so it looks different. And now they'll both go down and they'll become a little bit harder because you have to dodge two things. You might even decide to make one move faster than the other. One might move 10, one might move 20, and all of a sudden your game is getting a fair bit harder. If you'd like to control the cat with the mouse, that's really simple to do. We tell it when the game starts, forever, to set the X, the side to side, of our character to whatever the mouse X is. So we'll test that now. Now you can see the cat moves in time with the mouse and we've got a very fast, quite hard actually, dodging game. From here you can add complexity by putting in a variable for a score and putting in detection every time this touches the cat to lower the score or the lives by one.